Hey, my name's Scott and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set your camera to Lightroom. Now I've got a whole video showing you about the setup I have for my tether trolley in the studio, which I'll link in the description. But for this video, I'm just going to focus on how to get the camera's images through to Lightroom over here and keep it pretty straightforward. This we're gonna need is our camera and a cable. I use tether tools cables for everything. This is shooting through tether tools. This is tether tools. I'm not paid by them, I'm not endorsing them. They're just the best USB cables. So buy the right cable for your camera. And all we do is we plug one side into the camera and then one side into the computer over here, which is where we're going to jump now because I'm going to show you exactly the steps that we need. So in Lightroom, we head up to the top here, go to File, Tether Capture, Start Tether Capture. So first up, we need to give it a, a name for the session. So I've got Studio Session at the moment because that's the default. Normally I would change it to whatever the client's particular requirements are for file naming. And the reason for that is the next part down naming, it'll take the session name if you wanted to, and then add a file number afterwards. Or you can have any customizable setup you like, much like when you import and export photographs. Then we choose our destination. So mine's just going to my, uh, my desktop in pictures at the moment. Normally I'd have it going to one of my location drives to work with my workflow. I'll link a video in the description to my workflow as well because this sort of ties into it very nicely. I don't tend to add to collection, nor do I use collections in Lightroom. It doesn't work for me and my particular type of work, but if that is something you want to learn more about, I'm sure there's plenty of great videos out there. I don't add any metadata or keywords to my work either because of the sort of work I do, but this is something that a lot of people who shoot stock images, shoot for photo libraries, they'll be using this to make sure that their shoot is pre-named and all that information they need is already in there. Now, Auto Advance is a great tool if you're shooting with a client. So as default, when you take a picture in Lightroom, the last image you've taken will skip across to the next one and the next one and so on and so forth. This is great for me, but sometimes if you've got a client there and you don't want them to keep going, I don't like this picture, what about that picture? And there's a bit of a backlog going of files from camera to Lightroom, not ideal. So this can be quite useful if you've got an annoying client and then you just show them the images when you're ready to show them. I'm going to leave it untick for now and I'm going to press OK. Now this is the first point at which things often go wrong with Lightroom. So I'm gonna make sure my camera's on. I'm gonna take a couple of shots to try and tell the computer that my camera's here. We've got no camera detected at the moment. Take another shot, see if we can wake this baby up. There we go. So this is one of the reasons I don't use Lightroom anymore. I've actually moved over to Capture One because it's not that great at working first time. As you can see, I was going to edit this out, but I think it's worth keeping in there because it is a constant pain. The fix for this, unplug the cable, camera off, cable back in, camera on, take a couple of shots until it wakes it up. So this is our tethering interface. Now there's two types of ways that people shoot in Lightroom. One is to use the camera and press the trigger. And the other is to fire the camera remotely, which is what I used to do from this button here. New feature to this is that we can actually adjust the camera settings. If you're a food photographer like myself and you're shooting flat lays and your camera's well out of reach, this is really useful. So we can go, right, I want it to be at 125th of a second, F2, 1000 ISO, and then I can take my picture. And these images will just come down here. They're just ticking along in the bottom. It's a bit slow and it's a bit sluggish, but then I am shooting 50 megapixel raw files into this, so we'll, we'll give it some grace. Now when shooting with clients, our, you know, raw files don't look the best. So often we'll add a preset here. So these are all of your presets that you have available to you. So if we go for black and white, black and white high contrast, which I love for behind the scenes shots. If we select that, when I take the next image, come on, there we go. It's coming. There it is. There we go. It will apply that preset. Now, obviously presets aren't great. They don't really do the job that often. So what we have to do a lot of time is create our own preset. And this is where I find Lightroom's really good for being in front of clients. Capture One does the same, but slightly better. But this is a great tool, I think. So what I'm gonna do here is jump into this develop module. I'm gonna do some wacky edit so you can clearly see that it's the new edit. We're gonna come into the presets module over here. And then all we do is we go to the top with the plus, create preset, we'll call this test, press return. And then when we come up here, if we head down to use a preset, we can select test. And then if this was what the client was after, when I take the next shot, it will do that edit automatically. 
this is genius. This is brilliant. This has saved me so many times because I don't always shoot my raw files to look perfect. I shoot them so I can edit them well afterwards and so my retouch has got a good starting. Generally, when I finish editing, I'll highlight the images in the session. I'll come up here to File. I'll then go to Export as Catalog. And that means that any of my working out, as it were, any of my little tweaks and adjustments, they will come with it. And this will then go into my workflow. This, will make, this bit here will make far more sense if you watch my workflow video. But it's a great way to deal with it. Otherwise, if I'm just backing up the raw files separate to the catalog, whatever it may be, it doesn't always work great. And sometimes we'll be shooting for five days and I just want to export a few of them as a catalog separately. So I've got this behemoth of a catalog to work on. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope this makes sense. It's one of those things that once you know how to do it, it's really simple, but finding out how to do it and finding out how to troubleshoot it when it doesn't tether properly is a nightmare. If you do enjoy these videos, please subscribe. Let your friends know about it as well. I'm very new to this, so I'm trying to get out there a little bit more. And I'll see you all next time.